the social mechanism and how people interact and why people interact and the reasons people interact. It's more of a human society social uh, social mechanism that which drives us and moves us forward in interacting with other human beings and even in other animals, but it's a different story. But this is mostly about how the people, human beings, interact and why they interact and how they interact and for what reasons they interact um, and why and what drives them to interact. Um, and I would say that things that drive people to interact is finding use in someone, finding some practical use for their own purpose in someone else. They need to find some reason to... Uh, they need to find something in the uh, person that, you know, their friends, their acquaintances, they are mostly people they know they can rely on to get what they want, um, be it anything. We're, we're using them even in conversation. We're using them no matter what we do with these people that we, um, we find some kind of affection for, we find some kind of use for, and that's the point. They're using us. That's the point of having friends. They're, they're using our time. They're using our resources. If you have more friends, you have more people to talk to, um... The more people interact with, uh, the more time you're spending around other people, the more time that you're going to have to be spending and your more resources you're going to have to spend into these people, the more obligations you're going to have. And that's what having friends and acquaintances and social interaction is uh, the product of and the product of using people, um, almost in a way um, extorting people in many circumstances, um, and that's how it's taking advantage of people, the mob mentality, how one person uses all the other people for his one purpose. Um, and, and, you know, a leader and getting what he wants, using the other people and abusing them, extorting them, getting what he wants out of them and almost sometimes pushing them to the side. And that goes back to the social thing, um, how if you have no use to someone, no practical use, say even if it may, you make the person feel insecure, if you make the person feel inadequate or something, if you're not on their level, they're not going to find any use in you. They're almost going to find an outright, um, they're going to right out reject you. They're going to outright find some no reason. They're going to find out they overtly um, avoid you or overtly find you useless and maybe even say so and act so. And if you do this... Um, They'll, they'll cut you off easier, um, they'll find no use for you at all, they may not even want to be around you, they may out, outright um, ignore you or um, in a way um, find no reason to be around you or even fl cut you off, any sort of thing when it comes to um, overtly um, rejecting in a way of putting it, not like... Um, I don't want to turn this into a social anxiety kind of thing of being rejected and such. I want to talk about the social mechanism, so I'm trying to avoid those kinds of words. But I guess it doesn't matter in the end. I can implement that kind of idea in here. Um, and obviously the social anxiety is something that can feed into this when it comes to so um, social being rejected and doing things like this. Um, so um, experiencing this kind of thing can almost create a cycle if I'm going on the social anxiety angle. And um, it can almost make you hate someone. It can make you hate everyone, make you cynical, and that's the way you can almost view everyone else in relationships, personal relationships, um, acquaintances, and so on and so forth. You can feed the mechanism, feed the uh, failure of this kind of mechanism by um, feeding the idea of, um, you know, you get cynical and then someone else gets cynical and you recognize that they're cynical because they uh, may have more experience socializing than you, then you get that, and you're almost feeding the mechanism, you become exclusionary, sort of like them. Um, then it's more about the use you find, and sort of uh, making like the use that they have in other people becomes your use, and making you feel better about yourself, finding only the sprite people that make you feel good, excluding other people because they're not the ones that are making you feel good about yourself because of the social anxiety and things like that. If I want to go off this kind of psychology point of view on the social mechanism, um, I'm going off in left field. Um, so yes, it's about this interaction that we have with um, others, and you can become exclusionary, becoming cynical, um, being rejected in society, or whatever it may be, and interacting with people, and it can almost feed the mechanism, the mechanism that you very own hated, that you become a part of the mechanism that you hated, and it almost becomes a, hard, a, a game where it's hard to blame someone in recognizing that Obviously, they're emotional beings. They're obviously experiencing things, too. They may be skeptical. They may be paranoid. Um, it depends on the kind of people you're hanging around with and so on and so forth. They have their reasons. You have your reasons. Um, you, you'll be just as exclusionary every time you find, you, you, even when you, that's the way the social mechanism works. You find it hard and frustrating to blame someone else uh, for their denial or um, their rejection of someone else or whatever it may be and then you're doing the exact same thing you're just having a different standard for that you're having a different excuse 
um, and it becomes hard to get mad and it becomes frustrating. You get frustrated by the very mechanism itself where you want to get mad at someone. That's almost in a way justifying your anger for something, but you can't even find a justification once you recognize you're just being part of a mechanism in which you're interacting with people and how people find use and then find use in you and so on and so on and how you're part of the mechanism, feeding the mechanism when you are excluded and then you get included um, in a, in a group, uh, another group of people, another um, yeah, another group, and then you become exclusionary, cynical, and you, you start having your own um, narrower and narrower and narrower. The more you feed the mechanism, the mechanism has these um, outputs, and you put, input it with the same mechanism that other people are inputting it with, and then you're, uh, you're becoming more exclusive and exclusive. You have more friends and more or acquaintances, and then you interact with them on a different level. The more friends you have and so on, then you start excluding friends. You want a closer group of friends. Whatever the me mechanism, however it works, um, then you, you, you obviously feed the mechanism, um, especially when it comes to um, these experiences, the more experience you have in the mechanism, and so on and so forth, um, and experiencing it and feeding the mechanism by your very own um, interaction with it and how you interact with it. You're doing the same things, you just have different, different excuses. And so we're interacting, people are using us, they have to find some use in us, and if they don't find some kind of use in us, we're completely useless, then they're not going to find us a useful friend or anything like that, and <clears throat> if we're not, um, and obviously that can feed the mechanism, and, you know, they have to have some kind of use in you, either be an emotional, um, and there can be any number of reasons why a person may um, exclude you, um, that's the better word than reject, exclude you from a uh, social situation, maybe stop an acquaintance as opposed to becoming friends, or close friends and so on, and how the mechanism feeds itself. You have to have find use in someone, some sort of a mutual um, bondage, some sort of mutual um, usage of each other, um, some mutual crutch. You're both crutches for each other, a mutual crutch for each other for maybe the same reason, but usually for different reasons, um, because that's how it feeds them. That's how you feed. You feed on something that they help you in, and they feed. They feed off of something that you help them in, and whatever it may be, something they could use you for, and. Uh, find some use and sort of like you rub their back, they rub yours, and vice versa, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the way the mechanism works, and uh, there's all sorts of reasons why someone may um, find a reason to exclude you, and it's usually because you're useless, or you find um, they find that you're not doing them any good, or they may you may make them seem like they're on a lower level than you. If they make you, if for any reason, and usually not explained, um, these mechanisms can become. Um, very uh, wishy-washy and, and the flow on the wind, very thin air, and explaining and understanding these kinds of concepts and uh, social situations. So it's something that can't be necessarily, um, you know, put down on paper and understanding. But sometimes people just have excuses and they sort of want you to react in a level that they are. If they if they feel insecure around you or whatever it may be, obviously this is part psychology and understanding the social mechanics of. Um, the, the, re the reasons and behind the social mechanics in which we interact with on a daily basis and, we, and contribute to is um, yeah, obviously they want you to be on their level. Sometimes they, um, they want to get a reaction out of you or something like that. And sometimes if you don't react the way they want, then their own, they validate their own beliefs by the, the proof and the experiment they played on you on the um, they wanted to see if they get a reaction out of you and so on and so forth. And this is psychology and social mechanisms all in one because this, the social mechanism does rely on psychology. Having something in relationship, um, I mean, having something in common with someone is not exactly the same thing as them finding some use in you. They want to find some practical use in you and some emotional use in you. And obviously, when it comes down to having relationships, long-term relationships, why it's sometimes hard, the wife-beater syndrome thing like, uh, like that, you almost rely on the person, you're stuck in a hard situation, you rely on this person without this person, you're almost willing to put up with the crap of being abused to um, accept um, to accept the fact that you have a place to, to stay and so on and so forth, and how you are, you're not willing to deal, you're not willing to sacrifice this relationship and the safety, and not the safety, but the, um, st the, the ability to have a place to stay and live and so on, all, on all of that, and you're not willing to give that up just to um, stop it dealing with the abuse because you may feel like it'd be worse on the other side. It almost comes to a, an, an, a, um, a problem of social um, um, attachment, emotional attachment, and once you become emotionally attached, it's only, even when you find no use in someone, you find it hard 
to let this person go because you've known them for so long, you found such a bond, you found such a usefulness in them, you got so used to them, you, you relied on that use and it fed itself, the mechanism keeps fighting itself and you become more reliant and reliant. If you feel sorry for someone, the same thing can happen. Um, feeling sorry for someone can make you feel like you have, um, you're almost obligated to come to them, otherwise you'd feel guilty and so on. For guilt can drive things, um, emotional attachment can drive things, make things stronger, stronger bonds. Um, stronger emotional reactions. And feeling guilty can make you feel emotionally more emotionally attached. The more emotionally attached, the more it's the hard let go. Even though the person has no use, they're almost outright abusing you now. Um, even if the person's abusing you or you find no use in them or they become a liability, you still find it hard to let them go because you have such an emotional attachment to them and it almost became, it makes you irrational in reaction to how you treat everyone else. What makes this person different? It's your emotional attachment, your mutual relationship with this person that's driving you to deal with the crap. And, um, the, um, and deal with the liability and deal with the uselessness of this person in the relationship because obviously relationships are drive by usefulness but, and the social mechanism is, mechanism is drive by usefulness of the other person, this mutual usefulness between people. Sometimes you don't have that and the usefulness of them is your emotional attachment to them and um, the drive to make you feel like you're obligated to this person no matter what, even if they are a liability. So that's the way the mechanism works. Um, you find use in them, and otherwise, if you don't find any use in them, whatever you, the use may be is um, an emotional thing and so on and so forth. Having them there, their presence, their very presence, that's why when people die, it's about their presence no longer being there, their reactions, their usefulness, their understanding, their perception, and so on, their interactions with you, and the good times and the bad times, and the bad times with guilt, and the good times with all the happiness and joy and blah, 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 blah and the, these interactions and how they're useful and that's why when people die um, you know we have this gut and I guess attack hits you and in the gut and you have this emotional reaction where it's like this person's no longer here I, I'm, I, they're no longer here even though they're no longer here and they're not feeling any pain they have no context to the situation um, they st you still feel like they've gone beyond you and it's almost like they're not on your level anymore they've rejected you they're beyond you and I think that has some kind of um, it could be kind of built into the idea of, into a psychological, it could be sort of ingrained and, and probably d dug out of a psychological um, um, understanding when looking at a person that's experiencing mourning after a loss of someone. Um, it can come to feeling like the person is beyond, they've gone somewhere, you're, you're not, you're not, but they're not going anywhere, they're dead. But enough on that subject. Um, so that's the thing that you, obviously we need the usefulness in these people and that's the thing that drives friendships and the social mechanisms are what drives the, these groups and relationships and so forth. So we need to find use in someone in some way, in a substantial way. And if we already have a close-knit group of acquaintances in a relationship, we already have a circle of uh, friendship or whatever it may be. If you want to use the word friends, or I want to use the word relationship more, but I've been using friends just to get the idea across. Um, give. Uh, more realistic examples and um, if they already have a close-knit group of friends they're going to find it easier to um, reject someone and they're finding it easier to exclude someone because they already know they can have all these people and all these different reasons to rely on different people they already have this person to rely on for getting clothing and they have this person to rely on for getting food or a place to stay they have all these relationships they have jobs to work at they can rely on their job for this they don't need you they don't need you for a ride to work or whatever it may be. They find no absolute no use for you because they know they already have a group of acquaintances or friends to rely on. Even if it's just one, they find that that person is enough, that they mutually feed off of each other in such a way that it's a substantial in and of itself. One person's enough and so on and so forth. But they find that they don't need you. You're, exclu you're exclusionary. They'll come to you secondary if they have no one around. Um, they'll, they'll, you'll all of a sudden find yourself uh, fitting in when um, no one else is around to have that person inter in that, for that person to interact with. So you're all of a sudden in the game and not out of the game. Um, so this is something that obviously comes part of the social interaction. If they find no practical use in you, um, even if you're a very useful person, they just don't find that usefulness or they already have a person covering that usage in some one way or another to them on their side as opposed to you, even though you may be a useful person, just not to them or they don't perceive it or you don't show it to them or whatever it may be. You don't, 
you know, first of all, I think it has to come to emotional attachment first, and I think a small emotional attachment leads to an understanding of the usefulness. Otherwise, the usefulness you have in someone can be outright, and that's how you present them to yourself to begin with. But sometimes it comes to emotional attachment, a small understanding, a group uh, cultivation, an understanding of each other, getting to know each other it comes from acquaintances, understanding each other first, uh, first, and t first time you meet someone, or the uh, tenth time you meet someone, they grow on you, and they can. Um, emotional attachment then it leads to a finding of a usefulness in you um, and then it leads to a strong emotional attachment longer and longer and it feeds the mechanism over and over again and that's obviously part of the tragedy that comes in life is these uh, these ties that break and, and these these more these deaths that you mourn and these losses that you mourn when recognizing you lose friends the more you have an obligation to the more you're feeding the mechanism of life and the loss of life the more you you have the more there is to lose but the more you have the more there is to save you there's more of a safety net the more friends the acquaintances the more of a circle you have the more there's a safety net for you to fall on when things don't end up working out that outright, but you also have that same and equal and opposite obligation because they're not just going to sit there having an obligation to you and you have an obligation to them. Um, at least to begin with, obviously, that's the thing in life. And if you do have no obligation to them and they have an obligation to you, you become a liability and that becomes part of the um, negative um, mechanism that speeds the social mechanism and the life game that we're playing and how sometimes we have all the liabilities on us and we're being uh, the ones that are taking the unfairness while the other one's taking the fairness, but we're almost in a way obligated and become self-satisfying just feeding that obligation. We've set our standards so low and expecting anything beyond just helping someone and that becomes our obligation and our expectations for a good time or a good feeling is making sure that we make someone feel good even though that's not necessarily the way you were to begin with. It may have been, but it may have not have been. Giving an example, it may have not have been, but it could have, and now it becomes and your standards have gone so low. Bye. Uh, this is an add-on bit. Sorry, I had an interruption. Um, so I want to continue on the social mechanism idea and how the emotionals were feeding on it, and the, we're feeding on the emotions and so on and so forth. Um, that becomes part of it. Sometimes the emotions become first and then it leads to some kind of usage of someone. I wanted to go on that. Now you can use someone and it becomes part of the mechanism. Um, you use someone, um, you find some use in someone, you find an emotional attachment, you find some bondage first, then you find a usage of the person. Sometimes you can find the use in the person first and it becomes, I think that can lead to different kinds of relationships and different kinds of circles and where you are in some kind of circle or relationship to this individual in a circle as a whole. And it depends on how you present yourself, first impressions, um, or have a long-lasting effect and things like that. So these effects can obviously have some kind of use in how you were first uh, presented. Um, how you first shown yourself to some kind of group of people as an individual going from the outside going in as an example or different groups of people meeting each other this group dynamic the mom mentality like I mentioned at the beginning of the video and that's what we're playing off of um, an individual finds use in other people and other vi uh, people use him as a crutch for them living vicariously because they don't know if they can necessarily do the job themselves and then they uh, do the driving force thing and they push each other. Mob mentality it leads to something, say like a mob does something and the group leader does it and the, the other people beyond them, the uh, followers follow them, live vicariously through the leader and live as this whole thing, feeling like they're part of something, being driven by this driving force and this adrenaline rush and pushing forward towards something um, and uh, feeling like you're part of something and you're driving, fighting for the right reason, getting caught up in the moment, not thinking about anything else and so on and so forth about that mechanism of being just in the moment and so on and so forth and I think that's something that drives it um, at least from my perspective and understanding it um, um, so yes yeah, so obviously these mechanisms can work in different ways depending on how you're first in introduced how these sometimes can lead to a small bondage and, and whatever small relationship acquaintances and find use in you and then obviously you can go forward but if you find if no one finds use in you or you find no use in someone else it's more likely if you're, you were um, excluded, it's because you had no use to someone. Unfortunately, that's the way the uh, social mechanism works, and we, there's just different standards for different people because the more you have other people around you, the more an obligation you have. And if the obligation leads to you just being the person having the obligation and no one else has a use and having a return obligation, like you scratch their back, they scratch yours, then there's no use in having that relationship. And that's why uh, it's uh, important to understand that the using thing is part of the social mechanism. There's nothing we can necessarily do about it unless you have little um, expectation and having, unless you um, little expectation and having a friend or something and so on and so forth. Unless you have more and they have less, and your obligation is because you can supply them with something and they can't supply with you with something. And obviously, it feeds back into the whole um, mechanism of um, using someone and having and 
having an emotional attachment to someone leading to emotional attachment, leading to a liability, even if the person's no longer useful and relies on you and so on and so forth. I think I've uh, babbled on enough. I may have missed some uh, key point. I don't know if I have, but I think I mentioned all the relevant points about usage and emotional attachment in these situations and how it's a driving force and how it's hard to avoid the social mechanism and how it works, uh, even on your own, even if you think you're a swell person and so on. So it's a game that we're playing. It's part of this life game and the liability of the life game as a whole. Um, the, the give to get kind of uh, a mentality. So I think that's all I want to say, and I do appreciate it. I may have missed something, but I think I've babbled on long enough. So thank you, and until next time, bye.